Hey everybody, welcome to Disney Movie Stack. I'm your host Ray Goots, and I'm here with James Matter. James, how you feeling? Baby, I'm feeling with my hands. Oh, bubbles. Uh, so we uh, we had watched, or you we didn't watch it together, <laughs> but we watched uh, the Rescuers. We're gonna get into that. But first off, James, how long have you been doing stand up? I have been doing stand up. Man, it's like 19 years on the nose as it's being re- recorded. Okay. I was hoping you'd have a cake for me. Uh, I don't have a cake. No. <laughs> what a uh, chip. I don't have a cake. Oh, God, Jesus. Uh, by the way, the Shiva Mason episode was the lowest rated episode that I did, just so you know. So y- you're going to put that in? Yes. And you wonder why <laughs> <laughs> things go bad for you. Uh, she's never going to listen to this. This is insane. What? Yeah, in three weeks, I'm going to get a call from you <laughs> going, I was about me. to get a show on Netflix, and then Sheba listened to this episode, and she knows the producer, and now it's gone. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to say that. All right. I, so, I'm just wanted to say this yeah. as your... That's as how we're leading. As you're conscious, uh, I'm Dr. Dre to your M&M right now. Listen, Bubba, so in three weeks, there'll be a whole new whole new world. Monday My Night Goodness. Goods will be at, I, don't, I guess, LOL. Who knows? Sure. Hey, Bubba, uh, what, made you, what made you get into stand-up? I was in bands. Our bands are funnier than good. Mm-hmm. We broke up on stage. Um, I was dressed in a robe, probably, I think. We had cut out, like a cut out Darth Vader, I think. Maybe a blow-up doll. And it was utterly ridiculous. And then I had a buddy who got out of the military about the same time. His dad wouldn't let him go home past 10 o'clock. So he ended up crashing me a lot. And we'd rent videos when those existed. Mm -hmm. We would get uh, stand-up videos. And he was going to be a comic. And I taught him how to play like bass and guitar while we watched those. And within a couple months, I was out of bands going to open mics. And he was a musician. Ended up being a very good and well-known Las Vegas uh, music scene person. Okay. Does and that sound like I've told this story once or twice? I was just giving you the cliff notes. I just ran in and out. Cliff notes. And when was your when was the first thing you went on stage? Was it in Vegas? Yeah, dog. And how'd it go? Mediocre, which is the best thing that ever happened to me because there was two new people, two virgins at night. It was like 23 people waiting. I went like 19th. And the guy who went last, it was his uh, first time too, he crushed and I think he did one more show the next week, and it was and he bombed. Didn't know how to react to it, mm-hmm. and I don't think he's uh, he's maybe done it a few times since in the 19 years. And because it was just okay, it felt good to me. It wasn't a bomb, it wasn't a kill, and it was in my veins. I knew it was, I was going to keep doing it. But mm-hmm. that guy got crushed in a shitty show for horrible comedians, terrible mm-hmm. late at night, and then didn't know how to react the second time. When it wasn't good, when it was oh like, yeah, don't what, you love what your they, skill really is? They, they some of these new guys they do really good and they're like, oh, I should be on HBO by tomorrow, and then they do another show and they eat their ass and they walk out like fucking uh, Ricochet and Brock Lesnar at the Super Showdown in three weeks live on the WWE Network. <laughs> You're the king of segways, huh? Hey, there you go, Bubba. Um, and t- let me know about and when did you move to New York? 2006, oh. almost on the nose. March 3rd, 2006. Did you visit New York sometimes? I visited January 2006. Did you ever visit in 2005? Never. Never? Okay. No. But I January didn't... 2006, I believe I followed you at Caroline's. Oh, wow. I think my first real show was at Caroline's. I got hooked up to Shuley. And, yes. Uh, from the Stern Show, my, who's my real estate agent. I stayed on his couch for three months. Is That's how it is. Do you do real estate now? No, no, did you, you missed the joke. Oh, I mean, I was like, yeah, buddy, what are we doing here? I'm sorry. I'm Bubba. sorry I didn't make a WrestleMania 31 reference there. It, it, it references to Shiba. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I did like a mic at Sal's Comedy Hall, and then I performed, and uh, yeah, at Caroline's uh, is pretty cool. I remember the first time I met you. Um, I was at Caroline's. They let me pick the music back then via CD, and I had on like a stone. By Audio Slave. Good song. And you were like, hey, Bubba's, that's a good song. Who, who picked out the music, Bubba's? That's right, pal. And I was like, it was me. You're a good dude. What a pleasure. You're huh? a gentleman. And See, then, this is how it all starts. And then you, and then you just walked out into the Probably, night. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I like being mysterious. Yeah, and you just walked like you're Batman. And how was your childhood? Tell me about your childhood. It was in Vegas, correct? It was in Vegas, yeah. And how was it? It was raised by my grandparents. Okay. Um, Don't know my biological father. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I mean... <laughs> Uh, I was missing a tooth, 8 to 16-ish. That's bad. Uh, mom's drug addict. That's not fun. Didn't have much friends, then got friends, and lost my friends in ninth grade. Made new friends, which scared my grandparents. Ended up being good people. Mm-hmm. Put myself through college, and now here I am. Half a wise guy. Oh, Bubba's. And were cartoons a big part of your childhood? Yeah. 
Some people would have stressed that I was raised by television. All right. What were some of your favorite cartoons and TV shows? I watched um, anything Marvel back then, which is crazy because when you watch it now, they're just the most unwatchable pieces of garbage ever. Oh, like Sp- X-Men? Spider-Man and his amazing friends is terrible. But as a kid, oh, my God, it was the greatest thing that happened in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, X-Men was good when it came back. And I think it's still watchable enough. Spider-Man's watchable enough. Those Batman are very good. The Batman are classic. So gothic and wonderful. The Batman, those Batman are. Uh, it's weird to me that like it's just it's not on TV somewhere or Hulu or Netflix. It's I know it's on that DC app, but no one watches that. I have it. You have the DC the, app? Yeah. Well, someone gave me a password. No. Oh, okay. So well, you don't really have it then. Oh, Bubba. Yeah. I used to uh, Transformers. Of course, was obsessed with mm-hmm. GoBots. GoBots. Nobody talks about that. Thankfully, you brought it back. Yeah, I'd like to rewatch I, it. I, I, I like that more than Transformers. Like, the characters had more depth, I thought. Depth. I don't know. I mean, their names were ridiculous. That's true. There was a bad guy motorcycle named Psy Kill. Okay, buddy. We get you. But Psy see, Kill. I like that. The ba- I don't know. It just seemed like... um, I have to rewatch it, but it seemed... It was easier for me to follow than Transformers as a little kid. I don't know. Well, it was a simpler thing. Yeah. It was It was uh, um, Hanna-Barbera. It was Hanna-Barbera. Where Transformers, I think, was an anime company, right? Jet one of them. Um, it was... Let's see, Hasbro, but I think it was with Marvel Studios. Yeah, so like, but it was like very anime influenced. Who did G.I. Joe, and that's why you hear some of the same voices that also did um, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends and all that stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry, I'm just thinking about that. Oh, that was... You have something like, it just annoys you, and you're like, ugh. Thank God you have this outlet. I know. See, you could focus on that, and you're... Young Bucks pants. I want people to know that you shit on the Young Bucks and you wear their pants. Hey, it was on sale at Hot Topic. I'm I'm selling you out. Yeah, you sell me out in the Disney podcast. And was Disney? Oh, no comment. And was Disney a big part of your childhood? Yes. All right. Yes, I used to watch the Wide World of Disney. Is that what it was called? Wonderful yes. World of Wiz- Wonderful World. Of Disney. I combined Wide World of Sports and a Wonderful World of Disney, which they were the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to watch that on Sunday. Most of the times it sucked. A lot of times it wasn't cool cartoons. It was like Davy Crockett's and. And Escape from Witch Mountain, all this shit. But um, I remember my aunt would take me to re-releases of Disney movies in theaters because they really weren't mm-hmm. releasing much. There, it used to be special. There used to they used to brag about this is the tenth film. Yes, Walt Disney animation. That's that's the the numbers I'm going by with yeah. uh with this podcast. It's a big deal, dog. So mm-hmm. like I, yeah, my aunt would take me, and it seemed like a lot of times it was on New Year's. I remember her taking me on New Year's Day to see 101 Dalmatians, and it was like the greatest New Year's Day ever. Oh, that's a pretty good New Year's Eve. That's and, a pretty good one. And expected that every year, and it didn't always work out that way. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it, man. I what re- was I your favorite seeing... as a kid? <sighs> we owned Lady and the Tramp, which kind of bored me. Oh, I owned that. That was my first movie I ever owned. Yeah, we had that. Um, I saw Snow White too many times. It probably was 101 Dalmatians. It probably still is, to be quite honest. I really liked that movie a lot. That's a good one. And I rewatched it a couple months ago because I got Disney Plus through my uh, through Verizon. Oh yeah, that's right. It's free, right? Yeah, I went kicking and screaming into it, and then I was like, one day I was sick, and I just watched that, and I'm like, all right, let's just start watching Disney movies. Yeah, and I loved all that. That's amazing. That's great. Um, I love. Hey, don't you love when you get people like hundred dollar paid spots, and then they're screaming at you over a guest spot? I'm sorry, he's never gonna listen to this. I'm just, I'm just ranting. ranting. I mean, you're doing this in the (laughs) middle of your (laughs) podcast at Disney. I know it's no one's gonna know what you're talking about. I know that's good, but I, I think it's funny. Okay, but I mean, if if you're just a Disney fan, yes, and you at your job, someone was giving you a hundred dollars every day for your job, and then you had you came in one day for free, but the person's like, oh, you don't have to come in for free, and the person's like, I want to come in for free. Wouldn't you assume that person's a lunatic, Raymond? But this is kind of like an SNL sketch. Right? <laughs> I know. I mean, you're very close to being the Chris Farley show right now. I know, but I'm just... I, hey, I didn't do it. I'm I'm here it's, watching Barney Miller like you, a gentleman. You're here hosting a show. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> this is part of the gimmick. It's fun. Uh, look at this guy. He's a he's a gentleman. Uh, isn't he, wasn't he in like Star Trek or something? We're watching some black guy on TV. Wasn't he on Star Trek? I, I'm glad you clarified that we're watching, quote unquote, some black guy <laughs> on TV, Ray. Optima tax relief. So anyway, back to my... Uh, back to Disney. Uh, did you see The Rescuers as a kid? I did, in the theater. And what did you think of it? I think then? I loved it. Yeah. But then as I was watching last night, I wasn't sure. I almost texted my aunt. My aunt be Michelle. like, do we see this? But the, I know she took me. I think I loved it. Mm-hmm. But maybe it scared me. Maybe I didn't like it initially and then ended up loving it. Because I, I, 
Because I kind of have that same reaction as we get to it. I will talk about that. Okay. So maybe that's where that came from. But and, yeah. and you rewatched it for the podcast. Yes. And what did you think of it nowadays? It's almost two movies, and I guess it is. It's really good in the once it gets to the swamp, mm-hmm. and it is enjoyable. Yeah. And um, yeah. It's I end up. I remember that villain and those alligators a lot. The villain's a a a, a real villain. The villain's not a fun villain. Yeah, the well, villain's like this woman might murder this child. Well, I mean, are, are you going to get to the to some of the backstory of this movie? Uh, you know this, what, oh, let's give a synopsis of this. Of yes, the movie. Well, yeah. well, but you know that wasn't supposed to be her. That character it was supposed what, to be a different character. What character was supposed to be? It was going. The villain was going to be Cruella Deville. Oh yeah, because it's very similar to Cruella Deville. Yes, it is, and well, they get lumped together in all these shirts from goth girls. Well, I've got a uh, I've got a trivia for you. The girl in this movie is supposed to come back in Oliver and Company. She's supposed to be the little girl in Oliver and Company. Oh, but okay. now she's lonely, and they, she gets this kitten. The kittens with the street gang. You know, yeah. you've seen. Oliver I've never and seen Oliver and Company. It's good. It's very eighties. But um, so that would have made Rescuers, Oliver and Company, and Rescuers Down Under a trilogy. The uh, DC, the, not the DC, the Disney Cinematic Universe. DD, well, it can't be DCU. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what was I going to say to you? So, but yeah, so let's go to the story of the movie. So this little girl's been kidnapped by this evil uh, woman who doesn't have a job. Does she have a job? Just a rich she's rich woman who wants to get more rich. Just a rich woman that kidnapped. That's what I guess. She lives in New York. Lives in New York, but has a, a, a swamp. Just goes to this horrible swamp. swamp. With some nerdy guy who looks, who looks like an incel. Who's working for her, yes. Working for her. And uh, what is he doing exactly? Bil- I don't digging? know, but he was supposed to be another character too. There's, supposedly this... Disney Walt Disney like bought a billion properties like yeah, just all kinds of stuff and but there's separate books that mm-hmm. kind of got merged into one yes. thing apparently mm-hmm. and that's it's very interesting how uh, paper mache this kind of was yeah so the, the girl is uh, it, she needs the girl because she's gonna lower the girl into a well this is but what was that girl that was stuck in the well remember that in the eighties yes well, they cover that nonstop in Oklahoma I believe yeah yeah she's got kids now yeah wow. Well. You grow up, it happens. There was a diamond in a skull. The devil's eye. For yes. some reason, they know. She knows that the devil's eye is in there. I don't it's, know how she knows. She knows. But she knows it's in that little hole, and she and, was it, not Smitty, I forget the guy's name, can't fit into the hole. Yeah, because uh, she's because he's fat. So they abduct a girl, an orphan in New York City, yeah. and fly, fly out. Why don't she just uh, abduct a, an orphan in Louisiana? And I forget, what is it called? The, the, the island or whatever is called Devil Something, too, yeah. isn't it? Yes. And she puts up, the little girl escapes one day, puts the message in a bottle, and these mice find it. And the mice run a rescue organization in the UN. It's pretty which, interesting. And the mice, uh, Zsa Zsa Gabor decides to... Um, Ava decides Gabor. To, Ava Gabor, sorry. Yes, not Zsa Zsa? No, Jaja really wasn't the big talent. It was Ava. Ava was the real star, but everyone knew Jaja's name. They are. And I always a, I thought Ava would be like. Oh my! I up until this moment, I thought Ava was Jaja's like real name. So she would just call no. herself Jaza when it's time to. No, like, there's Ava. There's that's Zsa her wrestling name. And there's like another one. Like when Zaza was going to wrestle the uh, the Undertaker. Yeah, she had to change her name when Zsa. she left the territories. Yes. But then when she's doing a Disney movie, she's Ava. Was, I'm going to research this as you All do right. this now. Uh, I did. Okay, they might be sisters. You're right. Well, there is no might. But there might be a third. Are we pausing? No, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting. I, for I was you telling to... you to go on with the synopsis. Oh, okay, so you're going to okay. So the so the little the little Gabor mouse uh, says, "I'll do it," and the janitor mouse um, decides to say, "Hey, I will go along as well." Uh, with her now, the guy has no credentials. He's not really a part of the rescue unit. He's just the janitor. But you know they don't give a shit about this kid because they're like, fine, go with the janitor. So they they track down th- this cat who's old, and the cat tells them where to go. I think this antique store. They go to the antique store. The woman's there. They follow the woman. Yes. They miss the plane. They gotta have the a plane uh, is an albatross. It's albatross Air, and it's and he, an old and he's weird one. Voiced by a stand up comedian, correct? Wow. Uh, what's that? Buddy Epstein. could have been. Yes. Yeah. I know Buddy Hackett was in Little Mermaid. And um, and John Candy's in Rescuers Down Under. So, um, the 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 bird the bird is a way bigger part by because he's John Candy in part two. So the bird takes him to Devil's Island. They get off, and then like there's like a drunk mouse and a couple of other weird animals in the swamp, and they 
Yes, and there's also Magda Gabor was the oldest one, just so you know. Zaza died in 2016. Well, oh, so uh, one, Ava there's Gabor. Three sisters. There's Ava, Magba, mm -hmm. and Zaza. So she, yeah, so there, there's a bunch of Creole, uh, Cajun, like mice and critters who are just poor trash animals. That's what they're resembling there. Yeah. And they hate, was it Ursula? No, it's not Ursula. What was her name? I, I usually have their laptop up, but I'm, yeah. just to, just to give the viewers a little thing, there's some stuff going on. I'm a little frazzled about he's, in the he's, comedy. He's quite world. frazzled, everybody. I'm quite frazzled. Usually, I got my. I'm ready to go. But you know what? Here's the other thing too. So the uh, we're entering now the movies that where they don't put any special features on the Disney uh, DVDs, which is breaking. So like, I know everything there is to know about the making of Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. I mean, I know what they did on day 15. I know what they had for lunch because of these DVDs. The rescuers they keep in like mystery. For Medusa. all I know, there was like a there was like an orgy in the middle of the production. I don't know. Well, this this movie, uh, uh, it's Madame Medusa. And this this Madame movie Medusa. Yes, I was I famous because there's a clip that someone put in of uh, like a naked woman's breasts. Yes, yes. The, in the in the window. That was a big controversy, and they didn't pick it up until the first VHS release. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild. This is a this is I always call this movie this um, to me after watching them the first time. This Fox and the Hound and. and and Black Cauldron are the dark trilogy of Disney movies. This is like when they kind of completely lost their way. They're making dark shit, but they're still trying to be cute. But they're not. There's something off about the cuteness. Fox and the Hound is cons is usually when you look at the list considered like the worst. No, it's just boring. Movie. But it, no, it's very intense. I never saw it. They never took me to that or Black Cauldron. And then Black I got Cauldron's too old. boring. Black Cauldron's the bot. Black Cauldron's so bad they were gonna shut down the animation division and just make raunchy comedies. You're telling me that. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. I always want to see because the villain looked so cool. The villain is cool. The villain's very metal, but the rest of the movie does. But um, this movie, uh, I almost feel like I, these movies between Jungle Book, and this is just my theory, between Jungle Book and Little Mermaid are like the stages of grief. So right now we're uh, over Disney's death because he died during Jungle sure. Book. So right now we're in like uh, anger with this movie, th these three movies, and then Acceptance is Little Mermaid, where they're like, we're moving on with our lives. We don't need this. We're not in the shadow of this guy anymore. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, that seems like it when it really started taking off. Like, Great Mouse Detective. Great Mouse Detective was, a, was like, you know, you go to therapy, and you start apologizing to everyone you hurt. It, it brought, it, it was them getting on their feet, and yeah. then, yes, Little Mermaid's when it, people were like, yo, Disney's back. Yeah. And that's when they, they made that commitment to... I one think initially was it every year or yeah. was it every two initially and then well, it became one. Well, I think one. they were try every year and then they had to skip ninety three, but then the Lion King came out ninety four, so it was worth skipping a year. Um, but let's back go back to this uh, this synopsis. So fucking um, so the mice get to the little girl and we see a little butt nudity from the little girl, which was kind of creepy. The little what? The little girl. Yeah, it's why would why. Why is she taking clothes off? Why yeah, she's taking her that? clothes off a lot in this movie. What is going on with that? I noticed that. Like she takes her whole top off. Animators are all creeps. Like, if, well, you, if you read this is what I mean by the dark, about, angry era. But like Looney Tunes and all that, those guys were perverted, crazy dudes. Yeah. yeah. Like they're just old creepers. Can I just say, if you're ever gonna make another Disney movie where, where a female character takes over top, let it be Jasmine. I mean, let's fucking Jesus. I don't want to be a part of this. What Jasmine's like twenty. I okay. don't. But what are we doing? <laughs> we're doing a Disney podcast. Yeah, it's just naked, naked cartoons. This these is are a, Disney. These are for kids. Th this podcast it, is not for kids. Yeah, I, but it's. I've gotten paychecks from Disney. Oh, you, you have? Get me in trouble, yeah. What, what show? But for some stuff I've done for ABC. Oh, okay. Well, that's... But, you know, I mean, if you got paid to be in Pulp Fiction, Disney distributed that. I mean, you know. Not at that point. I think they bought him after. Oh, Miramax. Oh, okay. And then they, they gave him up after he, uh, after he molested uh, Pocahontas. Well, it took time, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so the little girl... so. They they get the in the well. The mice are in the well with them. They get out. They escape with the motorboat, and she gets she gets arrested. Right? She, no. What happens? I think the place just burns. Oh, okay. She's, uh, you have no idea what happens with her. I watched it, but like no. What I'm saying in general, I don't think oh, anyone okay. knows. But I believe they get the diamond and bring it back to yes, New York. Yes, New York. And they put in the Smithsonian. Yes. And the little girl gets her parents, yeah. and she thanks the mice for watching TV. And Ava Gabor is like to Bob Newhart, "Let's let's bang it out." That's exactly how that movie ends. She goes, hey, baby, let's bang it down. And like, ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. Um, it's very dark. I think it's very, very dark. The villain is very messed Terrifying. up. Terrifying. Yeah. It's two crocodiles. Two crocodiles. Yet she's very petrified of mice. It's very funny that she wants, she kisses 
crocodiles. Crocodiles. Mm -hmm. Or I guess they're probably alligators because it's out there. Well, they're on the lips. They, on oh, the I, lips. I thought that was Richard Pryor. Oh, sorry, what? Archie Bunker's Archie place. Bunker does look like Richard Pryor. No, that guy right there. Oh, yeah. Looks like Richard Pryor. You mean that or, or non-black person? Or Mosh yeah. I don't okay. see color bubbles. Yeah, well. Who uh, does these days? Who does these? And so, um, yeah, she just met, almost borderline makes out with these alligator crocodiles yeah. and mice. She has to run away and doesn't have um, Nero and the uh, other one eat the mice. No. No. It's just straight up. She sends her sidekick to go take care of it. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. This movie was, I read reviews where people thought it was great, and some people thought it, it the the uh, storyline's kind of silly. It kind of is. Yeah. It's not perfect. It's flawed, but it is entertaining. Yeah. She sends Mr. Snopes, Snoops after it. He's a real goofball. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I think yeah. he was an insult. You think they were banging, or you think? I don't think there was any banging going on. I, I think there's a better I, chance I of her with the crocodiles. Yes, in the fact that they don't want to bang. But it's funny because there are women in, in, that I know that are, that have pit bulls and they're afraid of mice and like cockroaches and stuff. It's very weird. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, but she just would just love Brutus and Nero. Brutus and Nero. But I, I, it's a dark movie. But like, it's also cute. But I almost feel like the cuteness is weird. Because of how dark the movie is, like it almost feels like they're trying too hard with the cute little uh, mice and stuff. Although I do like the two main characters. They're, I mean, they're interesting characters. Mm -hmm. She's very brave. Mm -hmm. He's a very nebbishy. Um, it's very interesting. There's Bob Newhart. I like that. Bob Newhart in action film. Well, he's just, I mean, he's an interesting I like career his in general. Yeah. No, a great voice. Mm -hmm. um, became a comedian from just doing like these telephone bits. Oh it's yes, weird. remember that. It wasn't like a like a stand up like us where he initially was paying his dues and going. It was kind of random. Mm -hmm. And then had two totally different sitcoms that were successes. Yeah. It's pretty interesting career yeah. for him, man. Mm -hmm. No, totally, 110%. And uh I love Newhart. I you know, I didn't really watch the Bob Newhart show. I never got into it. I did like Newhart when I was a kid. It was on it yes. was on Mondays at 9:30. It was buried. It was after like designing women. Yeah, but I liked it. And the ending. The ending saves that show. Which goes back to that his Bob other Newhart, sitcoms. It was all a dream. Absolutely brilliant. That was one of the best endings of anything I've ever seen. Yeah, you won't believe it. Uh, we were running a bed and breakfast. And these guys, great. Yeah, that was that was awesome. I really liked that. And best I, exclamation point ever for a show. that. To be honest, it lasted for years, but wasn't like a big show. No, I watched it because I just liked watching sitcoms as a kid. Yeah, and you had three channels. So, yeah, yeah, so I watched it at CBS. The, the sitcom block was my thing, and I didn't have wrestling back then. There was no Raw. Before Raw, you had to watch Newhart. And then, well, there's primetime wrestling on USA Network. Yeah, I remember Newhart being the first show that I watched that ended. because I No, Family Ties was, but Newhart was the second one. And it was like very like stre not stressful, but like I can't believe this is ending. Like this is part of my life, and it's over. I don't remember the last Family Ties. I think I was bored with the show and stopped watching. That was on a Sunday. Uh, Michael P. Keaton moves to New York, become a stockbroker. I always thought it'd be interesting because the recession hits like a year. Or two. I think it was in eighty nine. Like, that was in a, f a summer of eighty nine. Yeah. Always be interesting to do a sequel series where you can't do it now because everyone's too old. Where he goes broke and he's he's broke in New York City. And, um, you know, because of the recession. He's fucked. He's out of a job. He's got to, like, work. You guys got a magic comedy club. and uh, He has a magic comedy club. That's magic exactly what he would do. <laughs> and uh, he, gets, he gets berated by uh, Jim Norton for putting a 12-year-old in the front. So, <laughs> Boy, that's a, that's a lot to unpack right there in that statement, <laughs> Raymond. I think that would be a good uh, spinoff of Family Ties. Or they could have also made Spin City a spinoff. It just said he became the mayor's assistant. He was practically the same guy. Do you ever yeah. watch Spin City? Um, not really. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. So I was kind of done well, with sitcoms. But Bob Newhart, back to him. Back to Newhart. <laughs> that was, As Bernard. A, a Bernard, yeah, he was good. Bernard um, and Bianca. What a wonderful one two name. Did you ever see Rescuers Down Under? No, I started to watch it last night. It got me in the mood when I got home. I That's watched a few minutes and then went back to bed. Is on that. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't taken to see it in the theater. Maybe in 1990, I was too old. I think, you know what it was? Uh, a lot of people love it. It's but. kind of in the middle of this huge renaissance. Yeah. And so you have Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and then right in the middle is Rescuers Down Under. And it's very much 70s, old school. The villain's like a real piece of shit. I saw some Australian poacher. Yeah, it's uh, George C. Scott. They're not playing him for laughs like Ursula or even Gaston. He's just... Like, if he was the villain in Beauty and the Beast, he's like, uh, Belle, you're coming to my fucking house, I'm going to smack the shit out of you. Like, he's, you know what I mean? Like, that's what type of villain he is in Rescuers Down Under. So it's kind of weird 
it's kind of in the middle where they it's like this uh, this is still like kind of like 80s disney and then they they hit beauty and the beast and there's no looking back you know it's uh yeah i mean i was basically out at that point mm -hmm. i saw bits of little mermaid at their yeah. friend's house i was I out my, the only reason i watched little mermaid is my mom bought it um yeah. I didn't watch Beauty and the Beast until years later, Aladdin. I, I was like, I was in the, I was like, okay, this is for little kids. I saw Aladdin because everyone said how good it was. It it is good. Yeah, that holds up. I never saw Lion King until this summer. We that saw was, that in high school. They showed it when they didn't want to like teach you. It was yes, really they, weird. They showed that in my high school, but they only showed the first half. I got up to Simba dying, and then I had to leave. Not yeah, not Simba. What's his name? Simba's the kid. Mufasa. Mufasa dying, and then I had to leave. What a fun name! It's funny if I they said uh, so. What version did you see? imagine? They the, the, my school they had a version where Simba died. That'd be fucked up. Yeah, man. Alternate version. What if? What if Bubba? Like Marvel Comics stuff. That's what they could put on Disney Plus. What if Disney style? Um, yeah, you know. So I liked it. I liked it. What? What are you laughing about? <laughs> You're laughing at me. Yo, this Chris Farley sh podcast is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So um, I thought it was cool. Pause. <laughs> it was like chill. So, which ones have you done that you don't like so far? Uh, um, I couldn't stand. Um, I'm really not a big fan of uh, Thumb Peter Bo. Pan. Peter Pan's not good. I, mm -hmm. I actually, lit, Peter Pan was probably my favorite growing up. Yeah, loved it. Mm -hmm. But now it's not that good. I tried watching it when I went into that <coughs> my my rabbit hole of mm -hmm. 101 Dalmatians, Pinocchio, Snow White, Mary Pinocchio's Poppins. My favorite. Uh, Mary Poppins, I absolutely adore. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um. I watched Mary Poppins Returns because people told me that was good. I thought she was wonderful in that lead. Um, Pinocchio's great. That tops a lot of the lists. Mm -hmm. I love Fantasia because I also like uh, classical music, which surprises people. Yeah. And Oh, I don't like Fantasia. is my least favorite. Oh, see, I love it. It's, see, yeah, it's too, way too long for me. I, I think it's really cool, man. But um, I, I struggled with Peter Pan, but I loved it. As mm -hmm. a kid, so much that was my favorite, and that was the first ride I remember going on in, in Disneyland. Peter Pan and, and I wanted Al to keep Alice riding Wonderland it. Alice in Wonderland struggles. Alice in Wonderland, I loved as a ride. Okay, and but I, I mean, I as don't, a movie. and I remember not particularly liking the movie because it freaked me out. It's a little much for yeah. a kid, and and very creepy, and it makes sense that it's about drugs, right? Or that they, people attached yeah. to drugs. I, I remember could, as a kid... I could totally get... Well, it was a bomb. I felt very mm -hmm. dizzy and disoriented. I can honestly yeah. tell you that watching that film, but I loved the ride for some reason. My grandpa used to brag about how, you know, he didn't want to fucking take a kid to, yeah. <laughs> to Disneyland, but he's raising me. And he got a kick out of me on that ride. He took me like two, three times. And my, for some reason, my grandma didn't ride with us. Mm -hmm. But he loved watching me react for some reason in Alice in Wonderland. But the movie itself, I really wasn't crazy about. Yeah. Later, I liked the ideas of Alice in Wonderland a lot and how crazy it is. But it, 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 it is a, it's a, it, it really fucks with your skull. It, 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 is, it, is, it is an innovative movie, but it's just like, it, you know, I, I just can't sit and watch it sober. It's just it's like, all right, the, the, the character doesn't really seem to be affected by anything, uh, Alice. Yeah. And it just kind of goes from here to there. Uh, Cinderella is one of my favorites. That was great. I saw that in the theater, yeah. Lady and the Tramp. Um, Sleeping Beauty, I'm not a fan of. But watching in HD, I'm a fan because of the animation. Yeah, I hear people really love that. I remember seeing that and not liking it in the theater. Yeah. Um, now I like it. You, you got to watch it in HD on Disney+. Plus. The story's not that good. And... I want to go to the ca to the castle. I've missed, I've really been craving Disneyland. I think there's a Cinderella castle. Well, there's two. Oh, there's a Sleeping Beauty castle too. Well, the Sleeping Beauty supposedly the the castle was made before the movie, mm. and that you can see things that never made the film that are introduced in the castle. Yeah. Oh wow. And I also um, let's see, Arrested Cats is a hard sit through. Never saw it. Didn't even know it existed till I was like an adult. For okay. Some reason. That is uh, that, but it was the best episode so far. Well, this is a killer episode. Too. Oh, well, I'm sure I'm changing it. This is this everything is, about the show. You know? uh, this is a killer episode. Um, but um, that that was sometimes the bad movies make for a better episodes of this podcast. Yeah, when they're like bad, shit on it, weird movies. Yeah, like mm -hmm. this. This movie isn't the greatest, but I don't think it's bad. I think I think it's just very. There's a weird tone to it. The whole movie it feels very sad. I. Well, yeah, it's an, yeah. It, this the orphans, mm -hmm. poor girls, heartbroken. But even she's like never going to get adopted. She's. Is it fully explained what happened to her family? Doesn't she no. say like a prayer that her dad comes back or something it's, <laughs> that wasn't fully introduced? Mm -hmm. So there's it, it's it's heartbreaking. Yeah, and, and the just, color scheme is very muted. Yes, it's very dark. Even at, when she wins, when she like you know her, these people adopt her, 
it's still very muted and dark the color scheme and you know like everything is like just it's it's it just feels like a very sad movie it feels like someone who's like like a, like it feels like they're lost the yeah. people making this movie um the mosquito mm-hmm. or dragonfly that's fun that yeah. that is basically like a a, a taxi for them with the leaf. Mm-hmm. That's a fun aspect of it. Who ends up for some reason joining the rescuers? It's pretty hilarious. They just take him um, a mosquito, yeah, w- back to New York City Have to be with the mice. Have they never tried to recruit dogs or cats? Because I think they would be far more sufficient. I guess they, could, but a dog like Jasmine can't sneak on a plane like the cat, the mice can. Right? No, they cannot. Yeah, so Not maybe stealthy. like and she can't ride a pelican. So can you ride a pelican, Jasmine? I don't think she can. That's my little dog, Jasper. Um, the other thing too about this movie that's that I, I noticed right away is that every other Disney movie starts with a with this like glorious orchestrated song. The, the you know the ones yes. from the fifties and the sixties, even Jungle which Book, which I love. And this movie just has like there's no sound. Mm-hmm. It's just like the sound of the sea, and the and the orchestra is just this sad, like muted, like that is interesting. Yeah, it's not it's like it's like it's almost like like what were you trying to get? Like this is a kids movie, but you're like basically like fucking everything sucks you know right from the start i love the the scores of the old disney movies i love i like strings and classical music even though i'm like a metal and punk kid Mm -hmm. and all that but like i love that stuff a lot but just the way bambi starts or cinderella starts just this flowing music the the music in 101 Dalmatians is great yeah and this movie just starts with a and like still like this like this weird still photo. It's very very strange. It's kind of vanilla ish. It's, it's kind of just well, there, it seems isn't like it? It's it. We're they're trying something different. It's yeah. not really working. Yeah. So this was nineteen seventy seven. So this is r- right after Star Wars. So what was the one before it? Winnie the Pooh, which was also in seventy seven, but that is more of like a clip show. Okay. And um, then before that, what was the the last major feature? Was it Aristocrats? Uh, Aristocrats? Uh, no, Robin Hood. Which so I loved that as a kid. I tried watching that a few years ago. Um, incredibly boring and not good. But I used no. to love it. They used to play it a lot on Sunday afternoons. Eric Frost did the podcast with me. He still loves it. I'm not. I'm not a big fan. It, of it. It, it, I like those characters. Um, God, it's boring. Yeah. I started to watch, and I'll try and finish tonight. Sword in the Stone, which I never saw no, as, a, as a kid. I never saw it as a that kid. One, I f- forgot that one even existed. That's bad. Wait, did you not record an episode of it? No, I did. But I just for when you were asked me like to review, we don't. It was. Do you even remember who you recorded yeah, with? It was with Ben. That's why I think I forgot. Anyway, uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're an interesting host. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're not gonna. I, I guarantee you, if I did that Keith and Girl rant on this podcast, fucking no one would hear it for 27 years. Anyway, so what? Nothing. Hey, I'm having I'm a good time. I'm enjoying it, buddy. <laughs> I'm enjoying you, man. Uh, what do you think? Should I have like one of your ex-roommates do Rescuers Down Under? I still haven't picked a good comic for that. Think to complete the trilogy. Yeah, I don't know if they've seen it. I mean, Greg Stone. Either of those guys would be great guests. Yeah, Greg, Greg Stone. I, wanna, I'm I, sure I was thinking about saving Greg Stone for Big Hero Six because that's the one about superheroes. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good movie. I've never seen that. Oh my I goodness, I can't wait. Let's put it on now. Put on now. Let's do a live it? watch. A live watch of Big Hero. That 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 throws the whole order out of seek out of. Gooch, your dog looks very sleepy. Well, she does got, your she dog got groomed. Dr- does your dog do drugs? No, she got groomed today. She's she's not sleepy. If you bring out a treat, she'll fucking jump Look in at her, her face. Look at her right now. She's nodding off. Yeah. Uh, she's a good bubble. Is your dog on H? No, she's on... Um, Should we have an intervention? She, she's on... Uh, what you would call it? Uh, two, two minutes. She, she's on goofballs or something. I don't know. Oh, who doesn't like a good goofball? This movie reminded me of something I like from the old Disney movies. What's is, that? um Either a dog or a cat that's like an just an old timer. Yeah. The cat. I love I love the old dogs. Was I love the colonel or the general in one hundred one Dalmatians. They just also the, they get the some dogs old, were kinda older and lady tramp. Yeah, they get some they get some old this is great. They get these old vaudeville people and just it was getting them out of the uh actors retirement home. It was like, Hey, can you just be um, amped up you as a cartoon is a yeah. I love it I love it. it I enjoyed that cat a lot yeah I liked it too I uh, I enjoyed the cat and I was thinking to myself how old how old did they, did they think the cat was because my cat right now is 8 and I'm like well that cat's not that old and the cat must have been 15 or 16 and I'll tell you is that little okay? girl's going to be depressed because if that fucking cat's going to die as soon as she gets home if uh-huh. she took the cat with her if he's that old yeah, but those parents had money. I mean, this, this, oh, this kid just found a goddamn diamond. I guess that's why the original plot for Oliver. I wonder if the original plot for Oliver was that cat drops dead and she's like, where's Oliver? And then she goes, gets Oliver. Oh, Oliver's a cat, huh? Yeah, Oliver's, Oliver's a cat. A so dog. I guess he would have been the replacement cat. 
Oh, wow, goodness. that's a really the, the, the dark version. Well, it's, they didn't do that. It's a whole different girl. So they didn't they didn't put her in. Mouth. Thank goodness. Yeah. I'm crossing my fingers. Everybody who's listening. What? I'm crossing my fingers. Oh, that, that, that girl. Oh, yes. I think that girl please, and the cat are okay. Please, I guys. I hope of us. That's fictional characters. It's, I worry about them. It's it's a rough it's a rough uh, rough time. But yeah, no, they were. That, I like the old cat. There was usually a deleted scene. That is on the the blue right. There was the deleted scene. They're at the circus, the circus or the zoo. They're at the zoo, and they have to like interrogate an elephant or a tiger. I don't know. It was on the. It was on oh, the for the rescuers. The yes, rescuers to get to the cat, and then people. Uh, then the uh, I think the studio was like, "This is just too many fucking um, too many fucking animals." <laughs> that is a quote from them. <laughs> too many fucking. I think it was Roy Disney himself. It was like, there's too many fucking animals. Too many fucking animals. Roy, we just wanted to do that. Well, no. fucking, there's too many of them. Too many. Roy, why are you cursing? We you got run animals in the swamp. We it's don't like, need. You son of a. We don't need. Also, the other thing, this is the first movie. Oh uh, shit. Um. Uh, fuck. He worked on. Uh, <laughs> I had the name in my head. I should have wrote this down today. Jeff Keen. This was the first movie Jeff Keen worked on. Who was very. He. That is like. Captain America showing up because he basically is one of the the guys behind Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I didn't know that. So this is the way where those guys start coming in. They come in more at Fox. A lot of a lot more of them come in with Fox and the Hound, which I'll talk to with the legendary Dustin Chaffin next week. Wow, that's a, that sounds like a movie he would love. Yes. Yeah, that's his favorite Disney movie. So, um, and uh, so you know, uh, he did more of them come in, but Jeff uh, Jeffrey Keen or Jeff Keen, he I saw his name in the credits. So this is we're starting to get the crew that ushers in, you know, the next generation with CGI and everything. Where that crew is starting to come aboard. Starting who with became movie. these big time animators where animation kind of grew up in a sense and then became not not mainstream. I mean, it was it made, they made mainstream. movies, but it became a thing where now people are now looking at these as actual films. Well, yeah, sense. I mean, like, I mean, you there's so many great a- animated films since Toy Story one. They're like just great films. Well, Pixar and DreamWorks mm-hmm. animation, um, a lot of those are considered great films now, and it's it, these were all kind of just considered children's fair, but they can be fun children's mm-hmm. fair. And then Little Mermaid, and then Toy Story. I feel like elevate it. But this is the start. Even though this movie is not there yet, and it's still kind of like the old animation, just that one guy is going to credit. I'm like, all right, this is the slow start of like the real change where we are today. Yeah. So, which is funny because well, when that's I interesting. started this podcast, it was I was in the 30s with Barry Ribs, and I feel like he's still there. But uh, Disney movie, do you know, Exit of executive producer, God. You, do you know real Bar- comics eat meat? Do you know Barry Ribs? That's my um, Barry Ribs impression. Barry Ribs never uh, took his kid to see a dis- uh, any any movie. It's not my. I just can't comment on him on uh, that. But just I crazy. Mean, it's very. Yeah, he talks I mean, about it on the podcast. I never took him to, to the movie. They don't. I never did Disney movie. With him. Man, dude. I just feel like his kid was like, "Can we go see Oliver and Company? I gotta go sit in the back of the pair." One of the great it's comics. It's not open yet. Kenny Ward's gonna be there. It's not open yet. I don't think he's even born. Whatever. One of the great comics. Mm-hmm. God knows. The true ones Let me tell you aren't fakers. I just want to give you advice. I don't know if you're ever going to start a podcast. If you're ever going to start a podcast. But if you do, don't make your first episode be Barry Ribs. Okay? Just don't. Whatever you do. I just actually had a meeting about a podcast. <laughs> okay. And, um, and did they suggest They Barry said Ribs? Barry Ribs for the first 10 guests. <laughs> and I go, dude, we came to the right company. Yeah. They said Barry Ribs. Well, they said, just call it the Barry Ribs podcast. And I go, you're right. <laughs> Is that Gene Simmons? Gene Simmons is the pr- executive producer. No, God is the executive producer. God is the executive producer. God is the ex- of the of the Barry Ribs podcast. That was a rough one. That for a debut about a Disney podcast. I mean, you this this sh- wrestling shoot video Tupac sh- shit that you do in your. I mean, we're supposed to talk about a goddamn mosquito <laughs> taking two mice to save an orphan, and you're like. Yo, fuck her, free spot. You're talking to riddles. You're talking shit about the person who came to your house to do your first episode. Doesn't make me have faith that you're not going to talk shit about me oh, Bubba, in three episodes. You're a gentleman and a scholar. In the middle of the Princess Frog or whatever. It's like, man, he came in. He wanted to talk about the movie. I wanted to talk shit about smelly people. What? I wanted to just talk about my mailman who's an asshole. It's, it's, it's been a weird day. Jesus Christ, Imus. Well, okay, sorry. It's been a weird day, and you know this what is gonna day. this is gonna come out. It's not coming out this week. Yeah, we, yeah, it's gonna it's come out in a few. You ever seen that one? Lilo He's holding up Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, I'm holding them all up. <laughs> Home on the range. I, those are the next five I gotta watch. Oh my goodness! Because uh, I watched them ahead of time. To what do fun research. you're gonna have? 
Yeah. Oh, that's a drink coaster. That he's holding up. Oh, I got fun. PS a PS one drink coasters. Right now, Linda Smith's uh, getting hung by a tree by Shiva. So anyway. <laughs> What? I'm not saying anything to that. It's just, uh, it's just weird stuff's going on. Hey, uh, James Matter, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Oh, I got that at Comic Con. He's holding up a pillow. I should really be a video podcast with the bad too. girls. With the bad girls, yeah. You know, I, you know, I got really into Ursula after. Oh, Ursula's the one. Okay. Little Mermaid. I kind of got, it. I, I kind of got into like, I thought I like her design. But this doesn't have Cruella. I know. Or Medusa. Well, who are we, like some yeah, weird chick ones. made it. I also got this. Guardians of the Galaxy. Because I've seen T-shirts of like gothy girls with, mm -hmm. I believe it's Ursula, Corella, and I want to say Maleficent, which I mispronounced. Yes, Malefic Maleficent's on it. So it's got Maleficent, the evil queen, and Ursula. So. so the whole time in Snow White, the queen just wants to be the most beautiful woman in the world. And so to get rid of the girl who is the fairest in the land, mm -hmm. she makes herself the most disgusting being ever. Can I tell you something? It they makes should, no sense at they all. They should do an update of it's Snow It's like White. WWE booking. Yes. They should do an update of Snow White where the evil queen is like, I want to be the prettiest girl of all. There's Instagram. It's now. She finds her girl on Instagram, kills her. Right away, some other girl starts getting more followers with her. And then she just becomes a serial killer. It's a great dark story. Killing just all... Because like... like Fair Mary Mary on the Wall, who's the first of the wall? Well, uh, this chick is, she has a million followers and she's in Pasadena. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Great job, buddy. You should get into production. You know, I should. I got to call up Disney. Be like, what do you think about the, the evil queen? Gets well, Instagram. they won't make that, but um, you could do a version of it for someone else. Okay, where well, the evil queen gets Inspired, Instagram? Yes. And she's it, like, yes. fuck! And she yes. just keeps killing bitches. Now, what, you were going to ask me a question. Oh, uh, would you think that a, a kid nowadays would enjoy the rescuers? First of all, are you ever going to have children? I mean, I'm 42 in a week, so okay. I, I it probably not. But hey, Tony Randall, I'm not against it. Tony Randall, I mean, my dad was 56, and look what happened here. Oh, well, that's I didn't realize it was 56. Well, that's yeah, good. Ted Alexandro was 50, just had a kid. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, so he got eight more years than that guy. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. That, bye -bye. You got to start protesting some. I'm some not against it, but okay. uh, we'll see what happens. You gotta start protesting the police. Maybe I got my nephew sure. that I love back home in Vegas. Okay. Or cousin, young cousin, but I'm like 100 years older than him. So that's the. I always had a that kid like that movie. Why not? Um, my boy back. One of my boys back home has two young daughters, and they. When I went on that mini binge initially with Disney Plus, I talked to him about it. And he's like, "Oh yeah, man, we just watched Under One Dalmatians. That's a good one. They've been watching all the old ones with their yeah. kids, and they seem to enjoy uh, at least certain ones of them. Um, Rescuers is fine. I don't know if it's a masterpiece, so I don't know if it's a home run for everyone like like a, a 101 Dalmatians would be. Yes. Like a Pinocchio would be. No, it's not, but I like it. I, I, I think it doesn't get the credit it deserves. Maybe it will now that it's on Disney+. Plus. It was the first movie to ever get a sequel, so you got to give it that. Yes. Which is weird to me. Out of all the movies, like we got to do a sequel. But movies. ironically, with the, the reason they apparently kept... Um, Cruella de Vil out of Rescuers mm -hmm. is there's argument of why make a sequel character. Even yeah. though it wouldn't be a sequel to 101 Dalmatians, but in a way it would be because the villain would be back. They but, didn't want to do that. So that's the irony is that they didn't want to make her the villain mm -hmm. because it would be like perceived as but a But I sequel. think people would have been like, like where are the Dalmatians? Yeah, but then they made a sequel mm -hmm. to that movie. 101 Dalmatians and Rescuers. What, well, they ended up doing a, a 101 Yes, Dalmatians but it was directed to DVD, which yes. I, that's why I don't cover but it. But like what I'm saying, but Rescuers is the first actual sequel, and mm -hmm. the villain got changed because they didn't want it to be a sequel. Okay. That's the irony. So, yes. Yeah, so I, I do think kids will like it. I think it's a little bit dark for a little kid, but if you get a kid five, six, I think it's you get cute. Hit. Even the alligators are scary, but they're kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. I just think, like, look, uh, knowing, like, that Disney's dead and that the company was struggling at the time. I don't know if you would pick this up if you don't know the history of the world. Like, if you're just some kid and just watching a random movie. But I just feel like there's a darkness there because I know that the studio was struggling. They weren't what, what we know them to be now. And also, like, Disney had died and they really didn't find their way yet. So that's why I kind of see, like, darkness in it. Well, they're kind of headless, right? Yes. They're, they're headless just, body for they're a while. They're trying to figure it out. Um, Until, yeah. like, Eisner really mm -hmm. took control, right? Eisner and it was a Katzenberg. Yeah. All right, so um, that's the podcast. James, do you have anything you want to plug? or? Yes, please buy my wonderful album. It's called No Segways on Comedy Records. No Segways on Comedy Records. Um, I still don't know fully. Uh, I Just look for my podcast coming out with Nathan McIntosh and videos. 
I don't have a full name yet. We don't know what's coming out. What's but it's going to be about, you know? We're just going to argue stuff. So we might argue the rescuers versus the rescuers down under. I like it. That's There's, a follow-up. Yes. That's so good. please do. So you can follow me at Ray Goots on Instagram and Twitter. Um, also, you can follow this podcast at Disney Movie Stack on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, whatever you do, do not listen to me at Keith and the Girl. That podcast sucks. So uh, what? I'm doing inside baseball, Bubba. <laughs> Oh, Bubba's. So, oh, this is a two-parter. Oh, we're watching Alice now. Oh, shoot. I wonder if they got married. Anyway, um, that's the podcast. Next week, Dustin Chafin reviews Fox and the Hound. We're in the 80s, and I'm alive for this movie. He's alive, Bubba. We're I was almost alive for this one. We're in We're in my lifetime for Fox and the Hound. So excited. We're, 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 we're speeding towards... Uh, Towards 2019, so. I might sit in and be the fact checker. You, you know what? You could be. You could be. Uh, um, what's this called? Ed? Uh, not, what's what's the guy called? Fred. Fred. You could be Fred. You could be Fred. I don't know. Fred is he in uh, Howard Stern? Oh, for that. Yes, I'll just do Stern. sound. Sa- or you know, we'll be we, more like Benji. But yes, we'll, we'll, we'll get. Uh, we'll get. What's his name to be Baba Booey? Or J D. Yeah. We'll get fucking. Uh, we'll bring back. Uh, bring back Liz Mealy. She could be Baba Booey. I don't know. Hey, Bubba. It's been a treat. Thank you. Been a treat. Thank you. <laughs>